second grade. We have been learning so much about three digit numbers and we are getting ready to kind of reel things back a little bit and talk about some two digit numbers, but we're going to be adding them. So even though our numbers are getting smaller, our challenge is going up this week. Let's go ahead and get started with our learning target and see where we're going to go from here. I can add tens to any number. Let me show you these numbers right here. What do we already know about these numbers? They're counting by tens. Can we do that? Can you guys do that with me? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Yes. When we count by tens, we say those numbers. What else do we know about those numbers? They all have a zero in them. What place is that zero in? It's in the ones place, right? If I have a 10, are there any little ones that are extras? No, there's not. If I have two tens, how much do I have? 20. Do I have any of these little guys around? No, they're stuck together in this stick of 10, aren't they? So when I have my tens, I have these sticks, but I have no little ones hanging out by themselves. One 10 is one of these. 20, two of these. 30, three of these. Okay, and so on. Kind of like we were thinking about our hundreds yet the other day. Absolutely. <coughs> Anything else we know about these numbers? They're in that last column of that 100s grid, aren't they? Yes, we saw those just the other day when we were starting off our new learning last week. So when we think about those numbers, the 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, they have a number in the tens place zero in the ones place. Let's hold on to that understanding today as we solve some of these problems, okay? So we are, are adding tens to any number and you might be using a model, you might be using equations. Think about what you need to do to solve this problem, okay? And then we're gonna look for patterns as we solve this to make see if it's any makes it any easier to solve. Our first problem goes like this, Jordan, has 13 toy cars and 10 toy trucks. How many toys does Jordan have? Hmm, what do we already know? He has 13 toy cars. What else do we already know? He has 10 toy trucks. How many toys does Jordan have? Hmm, can I have you all write an equation that would match this story? and put a thumb in front of your tummy when you have that equation written, or that number sentence. What would we write? 13 plus 10 equals blank. I see a lot of wiggle waggles. Absolutely, guys, I'm seeing a lot of agreement. Yes, so when you guys say you, you, you agree, why do you agree? Where do these numbers come from? His 13 toy cars, his 10 toy trucks. And what does this box represent? How many toys he has all together. So I want you to think about how you might go about solving this problem. So remember, maybe you have your 10s and your 1s at your seat or you're using a computer to do that because you can move those around on the computer. Maybe you're writing a number line. Maybe you're writing equations. Use what you know to help you solve this problem and then we're gonna share that thinking. At home, if you need to pause this at any time, please feel free. What did you use to help you solve this? And what represents the tens? Where's the 13? How many ones are in 13? 
What did you add together first? Ooh. What digit changed? Did your ones digit change or your tens digit when you added those two numbers together? Oh. Wait, this picture cut looks like something we've seen before. How did you use your 100 grid to help you solve that? Oh, we do know that from the beginning of the year, don't we? All right, let's come together, friends, and see what we know. We're gonna start over here with our models. Mm, how did you use your base 10 models? And remember, friends, when we talk about base 10, we're meaning our, our tens and our ones, right? We drew a lot of those last week when we were building our three digit numbers. And so we can use those today when we're adding these numbers together. What did you draw first? You drew a 10. Okay, and then what did you draw? Three ones. And what number did that represent? Your 13. So you had your one 10 and your three ones. Then what did you do? You drew another 10. Okay, and where did that 10 rep what does that 10 represent? The 10 toy trucks. What did you do next after you had this model? And why did you why did you circle those up? Because those were both tens. Okay, and then you had your three ones. So now you have two tens and three ones. And how did that help you solve that? You know that two tens equals 20, three ones equals three, and so what number is that all together? 23, so then what's gonna go up here? Oh, I'm seeing more agreement as far as getting that correct answer. If you use your base 10 blocks, Give me a little hand, a little wave. Those base 10 blocks are a great tool to use, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, we have some other models to show, but I love seeing those come out and we're gonna be using those throughout this week. So keep those, keep those in, a, in your toolbox, keep them easy to access because they're gonna be helpful as we solve some more challenging problems. Let's think about and share some other ways that we could solve this problem that don't involve our base 10 blocks. Oh my goodness. And what was your way? You know, you had a picture in your, from your 120 grid that we've used. And when you looked at your 120 grid, your 13 was up here and you know that adding, to, you go 10 down to add 10 on your number, or 10 on your 120 grid. And what number did you land on when you went down on that 120 grid? 23. Why does that work on our, 100, our 120 grid? Because we talked last week, you're right. Each row has 10 in there. So when you're in this row, going straight down is 10 more. And what place changed when you added 10 more? Your tens place. Why do you think your ones place didn't change? Because there's a zero in the ones place. Hmm. Some other friends were sharing some other strategies. In fact, using that same knowledge and that same information, Drawing that number line. Can you tell me what you did when you drew your number line? You started at 13, okay, and then what did you do? You just made a big jump to 10. And then how do you know where you landed? You landed at 23, but how do you know that that was where you were gonna land? Because there's a 110 and 13, one ten in ten. And if you know that one plus one is two, then you know ten plus ten is twenty. And then you have your three plus your zero equals three. Very interesting. 
So if we were going to write that in equations, what would that look like? Ten plus ten equals twenty. Twenty. We still got to add that three, don't we? Equals twenty-three. So that equals twenty-three. How is this equation similar to this base ten model? Take a minute of private think time. Whether you're at home or at school, take a moment of private think time. How does this equation? match this base 10 model. Put your thumbs in front of your tummies when you're ready to share. I want you to turn and face your partner or tell somebody at home, how are these two ways similar? Go ahead and just turn and talk super quick. And coming together, always feel free that you feel free to pause. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. How are these two ways similar? What did you hear? Or what do you see? The two tens here that this friend added together are right here in the ten plus ten. Where's the rest of it? There's those three that we didn't add the first time. There's that three we didn't add the first time. And where do we add that in, in the base 10? After you added to get to 20, you added that three. There it is. There it is. They're very similar, aren't they? Except for you, we're using models with one and numbers with another. Oh, second grade. Let's see if we can use that knowledge to solve our next problem. So what did you notice about this problem? What place changed? Hmm, so I'm going to start a little think bubble, okay? And I'm wondering if this is always going to be true, okay? So when adding a 10, the tens place changes. We noticed that this time. Will that still be true next time? I don't know if it's always true. And we can't really prove that until we see it over and over and over again, right? So we wanna make sure that we're looking for that each and every time. If we don't see it every time, is it true? No. Okay, so we're really asking ourselves, is this always true? Let's take a peek. Launch number two, are you ready? There are 50 blue balloons and 16 red balloons in the park. How many balloons are there in the park? 50 blue balloons, 16 red balloons. How many balloons are there? What do we already know? Hmm, what do we already know, my loves? There are 50 blue balloons. What else do we already know? 16 red balloons. And friends, you can always write these numbers down or underline them if you see them in writing to help you think through this work. What are we trying to find out? How many balloons are there? Total, the sum. What would our equation be? And how do we know? Where do those numbers come from? The 50 blue, the 16 red, and what does this unknown represent? The total number of balloons. Okay, it's time to solve. And remember, we're gonna use those base 10 models. We might use a different model and maybe even an equation to help us solve this. Go. Where are your 50 blue balloons? Where are your ones in that work? Why aren't there any ones with your 50 blue balloons? 
Oh, because there's zero ones in the th with 50. Hmm, so what are you going to do first? How does your model show this equation? What place is changing? How do you know? Where did you, where's your, where is this part? Where is this part of your equation in your model? Mm, coming together, friends, in five, four, three, two, one, and done. Again, as always, remember, you can pause if you're not quite ready. Let's take a minute and we're gonna see what that, num with, with what our model looks like when we're using those base tens first. So where are we starting? I had a friend over here that was just telling me how they were starting. What did you draw first? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And why did you draw five tens? Because there's 50 blue balloons. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Those are your 50 blue balloons, okay? Then what did you do? You drew your 16 red. How did you show 16? One 10 and one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. The 16 red balloons, all right. And then what did you do next? Why did you group your tens together? Because it's easier to add your tens together. So how many tens did you have? You had six tens, okay? And what did you have? How many ones did you have? Six ones. Then what did you do? Six tens is the name is the same as sixty. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And you add six ones. And why is it just six? Because they're worth one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And what is your total? 66. Oh. What do you notice about that number? What place changed? Well, if you had 50 plus 16 and it equals 66, did your ones place change with your six ones? Nope, it's still a six. Did your tens place change? It was a one ten. Yes, it did. This is the place that changed. When adding a 10, the tens place changes. Is that still true here? Ooh, let's see. Can we show some other ways to solve this problem? Let's do it. All right. Where did you start with that number line, friend? 50, it might start with 50 bigger number okay and what did you do after you went to after you started at 50 you made a jump of 10 okay and after you made a jump of 10 where did you land how did you know that you land on 60 because when you're counting 10 20 30 40 50 60 so when you skip count by tens you start at 50 the next number is 60 Okay, and what did you do next? You added six ones, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. And how did you know that that landed on 66? Because that's 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, and 66. So six more equals 60. I had a friend use just equations to solve this work. I'm anxious to see how those equations match either our base 10 model 
or our number line model. What did you do first? You wrote your basic equation, okay, and then what did you do? You added 50 and 10, and what's 50 plus 10? 60, how do you know? Five tens and one ten is six tens, so 50 and 10 is 60. Hey, and then what did you do? You still needed to add your six, and what was your total? 66. I want you to take a minute again and look at that connection between this work and this work, this work and this work. How does this equation match these models over here? There's the 50 and the 10, the 50 and the 10. There's the six ones, the six ones, the six ones. 66, 66, 66. Is that still true? The tens place changes, but the ones place stays the same? All right. Let's see if it's true. We're gonna do a couple more just for practice. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to solve. I've got these three problems and I want you to do these on your own. Um, and when we come back together, we are going to see if those are still true or not. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to keep our video going. I want you to solve these and I want you to tell somebody at home or tell us at school, is this still true when we're adding these numbers together? If it is, we know that that is something we can always depend on, okay? Keep, go ahead and show that work and make sure that that tens place is the place that's changing so we can see if we can prove that to always be true. Happy solving.